Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Gooey's Dungeon Dive, the podcast where I, Gooey, rank all of the dungeons in the Legend of Zelda series, and this week in Oracle of Ages, along with our misguided buddy Ralph, we sneak into Ambi's palace, have a battle with the Varen-controlled body of Nehru, and free the Oracle of Ages from her control. Unfortunately, Varen turns her sights towards Queen Ambi herself as Nehru helps the rest of the group escape. No longer controlling Nehru, Varen is still caught in the past, but while controlling Queen Ambi and backed by the power of Twinrova, she is still a threat. Nehru teaches us a new song, The Tune of Ages, that allows for free time travel between the past and present. Equipped with that, and our latest item acquisition, the mermaid suit, we can make our way to the Zora Seas. The seas are quite polluted and have led to illness overtaking much of the population. This includes the king of the Zora people, who by present day has been long dead. In the past, if we heal the king, he will still be alive in the present. He asks us to help him cleanse the seas so that we may aid his people and Lord Jabu Jabu, the guardian of the Zora people, as well as the holder of the next essence of time. We also meet the Fairy Queen, who has a curse placed upon her by Varen, which is also what is polluting the seas. Using a key the king gratefully gave to us, we can open a library in the past, obtain a special book in the present, which allows us to obtain some fairy powder in the past. This can heal the fairy queen, which allows her to cleanse the sea. And then finally, with King Zora's permission, we can enter our next dungeon, which is Jabu Jabu's belly. And here we are again in the belly of the beast. Taking a cue from Ocarina of Time, we have maybe the most unique setting in Oracle of Ages. It doesn't have all of the same charm of the Ocarina of Time Jabu, but it does have some nice little touches. Instead of the regular walls of like a, the Oracle or Link's Awakening games, the walls of this dungeon actually do have a little bit of like animation to them that make them look like they are part of a living organism. Also we get some of that aquatic life floating about. You know, it's a valiant effort at uh, translating that sort of vibe to 2D. It's also worth noting that the map itself, like Ocarina of Time, when all three floors are combined, it does look like a fish. So needless to say, this is probably one of the most complicated dungeons in the series. Though, like its Ocarina of Time counterpart, in that this dungeon takes place within the belly of the Zora Guardian, in its structure and gameplay, it is more similar to the big head scratcher from Ocarina of Time, which is the Water Temple. Primarily because this is another dungeon where the key to progression involves altering the water level between the dungeon's three floors. Why does Jabu Jabu have this mechanism in inside of him? Don't ask me. I think the dungeon does a pretty masterful job of weaving in the various gates of progression, like the small keys and the dungeon item, you know, putting them all together in such a nice non-linear way. It actually feels like this seems less straightforward than the water temple, but that could be for a few reasons. Like, I think the water temple being in 3D and having this large central room can both give you a nice landmark to orient yourself with, as well as give you a better visual of like the height and the depth of the water level changing. That being said, I think this dungeon does a great job of transferring that concept into a 2D space, even with those limitations. Some may be thrown off by these platforms that sit on the water and move from floor to floor as the water level is lowered and raised, but the game does highlight that these golden platforms raise and lower like that, and it really does test your spatial reasoning, and I think it's in a fair way. Like some of the best dungeons before it, it really requires you to fully understand the surroundings and the layout and how the mechanism affects the different rooms and definitely powering through this one will leave many people frustrated. Of course, I gotta do a quick hit here on the bosses. In the mini boss fight, we get a little rematch against the Anglerfish. Presumably he's embarrassed by his beating in Link's Awakening. He's kind of a more fun mini boss here though. He just bounces around the room and shoots little bubbles at you. It's not like a big deal or anything. I actually didn't even remember. You can stun him with the seed shooter. It wasn't even necessary in my fight. It's pretty easy without it, but it's still kind of a novel little mini boss fight, so 
Yeah, sorry, bud, but you're okay. The final boss, though, well, it's another aquatic creature named Plasmarine. Plasmarine is a jellyfish that alters between two colors, red and blue, and kind of in a similar style to many bosses that have come before it. When it's one color, it shoots that color attack at you. The key to defeating it is allow it to fire at you, then use the switch hook or the long hook, the dungeon item, to swap its color and its location with you, which now puts it in the path of the attack of the opposite color, which it's vulnerable to, and then you just repeat that for a while. And it's not too hard, but it does give a bit of a challenge, and it's fun and satisfying to pull off, you know, putting it and using its own attack against it. That's satisfying. <laughs> and in its defeat, we are able to pick up that next essence of time, the Rolling Sea. The mystical song of the sea roars into a crashing wave that sweeps heroes out into adventure. But of course, evil's deeds are not done, as we see Twinrova and Varen have completed the Black Tower, and they're in the past wreaking havoc still and causing things to change in the future. And so it's going to be quite the time trying to find the last essence, which the Maku Tree cannot even sense. So yeah, like I said, what more can I say? I mean, I thought about, like, do I just re-explain how uh, the water <laughs> temple works? Because it's kind of the same, you know, concept, uh, which is a great concept of, you know, using the water levels as a different you know, altering state of, you know, being that you can progress through and then put certain locks and keys and stuff like that between the different water levels or, you know, just being able to, yeah, just being able to do certain things when the water's up and down. It's, um, yeah, it's like one of my favorite types of puzzles. Um, it certainly, yeah, makes for, even with the time travel thing and, in Mermaid's Cave, it makes this one of the most unique dungeons we've encountered here. And I'm thinking if I'm ranking the Ages dungeons, I think it's gotta be the best, right? Um, yeah. I think this is the best one in Ages. It's certainly more ambitious than any of them, even though it is just, it is kind of got all, almost all its ideas <laughs> from a different dungeon. Um, so maybe Mermaid's Cave would win out on originality, but I think this more than makes up for it in just being a really well-explored concept. So that, I mean, that puts it... Does it crack top five, though? That's what I want to know. Like, if I'm... Uh, I, I guess we've got Water Temple and Great Bay up above it, which are the other water-based ones other than Swamp Palace. And the question is, where does it rank amongst the water-based dungeons? I can, again, kind of see the argument that people have said about, like, I've seen a lot of people say this one's kind of a headache, and I do think maybe the 2D element adds to that. Actually, I don't know. I think the way it's constructed and all put together is, like, really cool. <laughs> um, uh, most of the issues are more... I think, yeah, if you just aren't kind of doing your total diligence, it can just be confusing to, like, navigate around. But that's kind of the point, I guess? Um... I actually think the way it weaves everything together at times is more interesting than uh, the water temple. But I don't know. I hmm. Is it better than the water temple? It's really close. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's really close to me. You know what? I think. I think I gotta let the water temple edge it out um in fact i don't i don't even think looking at some of these other ones i think they might go above it too um while i think this is a great dungeon a couple things do mark it off a little bit 
I think, um, I didn't really mention it in the other video either, but like, I think the mermaid suit is not, I don't really love getting around in that. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think I was kind of dismissive, like the, there's elements of like the water temple with the boots or whatever that have been kind of remedied that kind of factor in, or like some people have an issue with the swimming in certain versions of Great Bay Temple or whatever, but um, I think the mermaid suit might be the least my least favorite uh, water navigation of the three of them, and that accounts for a lot of the movement in the dungeon, so it's a little, you know, I, it's this is kind of a minor squabble, I'm just trying to like figure out how to place it, you know, because I, I feel like it's not something that I like hate, but I feel like that can kind of count against it a little bit. That and, of course, what I mentioned about, like, the layout and the, you know, nature of 2D, it, it does fall a little bit short. And, I don't know, I, I actually still think Eagle's Tower with the, uh, the ball mechanism and, like, trying to move that around is actually pretty uh, unique and interesting. And uh, Ganon's Tower is just such an awesome final dungeon. Uh, I don't know if I want to bump that yet out of the top five. So I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, right now, maybe I'll move it up. Because I, I was feeling like, for a moment, like it could go higher. But um, you get no one actually saw this, <laughs> or is going to hear this, but I like stared at the screen for so long. Like, where do I put this? And I'm really struggling with it, but I think I want to just keep it at six right above Mermaid's Cave for now. Um, kind of a holding place, because I, you know, I, I initially was like, really thinking like, hmm, maybe it's, maybe it's two or three, I don't know. Let me know though, let me know what you think. I, I think this is like kind of a safe place to put it for now though. It's really well done, and in certain aspects, I think it does better than Water Temple. It is kind of just like, hey, let's kind of translate that. Um, which they did an awesome job, so don't get me wrong. So, yeah, really strong dungeon. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the kind of next main dungeon <laughs> in the game, the final one, I guess, uh, brings us. So... Uh, two more episodes after this, though, so I'll see you next week.